Hi everybody, this is Dr. Isha Bose back again with the second video of the series which is on black body radiation. So let's start right away. If you remember in the last video we have talked about the concept of an ideal black body. So reminding you once again Anything that absorbs radiation of all wavelengths does not transmit or reflect any part of it and starts emitting radiation when further heated is called an ideal black body. Now in this video we are going to talk about the radiation emitted by such black bodies. Okay. So basically black body radiation is also electromagnetic radiation. And it is emitted by the body when it is at thermodynamic equilibrium with its environment. Which means it is not absorbing any radiation at that moment. And it is neither reflecting or transmitting any part of it. It is emitting it. Now the radiation, this black body radiation has a specific spectrum and intensity that depends only on the temperature of the body. It doesn't matter what type of material the body is made up of. Okay, so whether it is made up of wood or iron doesn't matter. Only the temperature of the said black body is of importance. Moving forward, in the late 19th century, many scientists were actively engaged in the study of black body radiation. But the most comprehensive study was reported in, 19, in 1889 by Lummer and Prinshee. Now the experimental details about the setup and all the nooks and corners can be very easily found out in the internet. In this video, I am not going to talk about those details. If anybody is interested, they can very easily find them in the internet and study about them. Right. Now, this is what a typical black body spectrum looks like. Now remember, black body spectrum means the emitted black body spectrum. The energy which the black body has emitted. Now this is what the spectrum typically looks like. See carefully, at the x-axis we have wavelength, wavelength of the radiation that has been emitted by the black body. Right. And at the y-axis we have plotted power density. Power density of the radiation which has been emitted by, by, by the black body. Now, Looking carefully, you can see that there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 plots. Each of these plots actually represents one of the temperatures at which the black body is at that moment when its radiation has been observed, or measured and noted down over here. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at the first one where the, the line has been uh, drawn as a, a solid line, that is typically... The, the graph of the radiation emitted by the black body when it is at something like 6000 Kelvin. Alright. Typically as we uh, lower the temperature, the, the graph evolves from uh, one to the other. Now, from this particular spectrum, various observations can be made and one can try to understand what is the black body uh, radiation spectrum about and what are the various things which are inside it, right? So, let us try to understand what are the observations which were made late during the 18th century. So, the first observation that I would like to talk about is the shape of the distribution. Look carefully. Initially as the wavelength of the emitted radiation increases, the power density increases, reaches a maxima or a peak and then as the wavelength increases, the power density decreases. This particular trend is common at all temperatures. Now, looking carefully, you can see that this peak that we are talking about is not at the same wavelength for all the temperatures. As the temperature of the body increases, this peak shifts towards the lower wavelength or higher frequency region. 
So there is a shift in the peak towards the lower wavelength with rise in the temperature of the black body. The third most important observation which can be made from here is about the total power output. Now see, at the y-axis we have the power density and at the x-axis we have wavelength. So typically considering the area under any of the graphs, we can just calculate very easily the total power which has been emitted by the black body. Okay. So now starting from all these observations, few laws were coined or given to us so that the observations could be very precisely understood or maybe written down. Right. The first law that I am going to tell you is Wine's displacement law. Now, the wavelength at which the emitted radiation is strongest is given by Wine's displacement law. It says that when the temperature of a black body increases, the overall emitted energy increases and the peak of the radiation curve moves towards the higher frequencies or the lower wavelength. Hotter objects emit a larger fraction of the electromagnetic radiation at shorter wavelengths. This displacement of the peak of the curve is called as Wine's displacement law. Now, a consequence of Wine's displacement law is that the wavelength at which the intensity of the emitted radiation is at maximum, if we may call it as lambda m, is just the function of the temperature of the black body. Okay. So, mathematically, Wine's displacement law can be written as the product of lambda m into t as a constant. Moving to the second law that can be observed from the typical plot that we were discussing, it is called Stefan Boltzmann law. And it says that the total power emitted per unit area of the surface of a black body for all wavelengths is directly proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature T, obviously in the Kelvin scale. And the sigma that you can see in the equation is called the Stefan's constant. As a very small exercise, may I ask you to deduce its unit? It's very easy. So once all these observations were made, the laws were given, a surge in research activities came inquiring about what could be the reasons behind this kind of observation? Why was the graph like that? Why there was a peak? Why this peak was shifting? And so on. And various scientists put in a lot of efforts to find out the reason. But scientists like Wine, Raleigh and Jeans have to be given more credit for their work on these topics for giving us various hypotheses and deductions and various mathematical calculations okay but that we will be discussing in the next video so i hope i'll be seeing you there very soon bye bye